are in the part of the process where we're describing dark accents, looking in the shadowy areas of the painting, coming back, just trying to find all those cool little bright or dark accents. Uh, accents like here. So he goes like that. Looks like little bits of greeny brown. We'll worry about that later. Okay. I see this is soft. This is going to blend into something else, and it's especially soft down there. Clean my brush and try to get that beautiful strong red in there a little stronger yet. It's going to go with the straight quinacridone. Okay. Right down there. There it is. This happens. Look down here, that's super dark. Okay, I'm going to go back to the full view because uh, I'm one of those people, show me detail and I get too hung up on it. So I'm going to push it back so we can get, so I do my best at kind of trying to see the whole image at once rather than focusing on anything, any detail in particular. Okay, now I'm going to work on that red before I move on because that relationship between red and shadow there is super important. It looks like there's a deep red. We use my quinacridone red straight. And I'm starting to make the color transition from transparent to opaque. I'll lay a mark in right around there. And I see it come down there. And I'm going to put it right here so my dark edge blends in. Okay. Where else does it happen? Well, clearly right around the edge of this apple to about right there. And down here. There we go. Okay, I think... There is some heavy blue accents or bluish gray accents in the tablecloth. I think we've got to work on those now. And then we'll put in our light accents and we'll be good to go. Some pull. Using ultramarine blue, muddying it up a little bit with the transparent red earth. So you get the idea, right? When you're wanting to mix super dark colors, mix colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Okay. Does that. Something, little twiggy thing at the top is kind of dark. Something dark right there on top of the little green light. Okay. There we go. Move down to the shadow. There. And there. Angle measurement comes out like that and down like that. Okay, fill up with more of that. And then you can see it softly goes 
out. And there's that, oh, that neat crease. I love those creases in the fabric. I remember a lot of old still life paintings uh, that I've seen in museums also honor those fun little creases. So I'm gonna try to represent at least one of them. We'll do that one. Folds back like that. This is dark up at the front, and then down here at the back, it turns kind of a pale blue right there. Pull the pigment out so I don't forget to do that later, and it looks like there's some super darks way up there in the background. So put them in. Angle check. Blew it up with some manganese blue. And bring her up. Just to help me a little bit. Use my finger down here where I don't want it to collide with the apple. Get it all transparent. And I think we're good to go. Okay. And then it looks like the edge of the table on the other side is pretty blue. Right there. And it looks like that blue, that shadow just slightly turns into that pretty blue. Okay, I think we are ready to move on. Let's add a little blue where I know shadows would be. A little there. I think I've got that angle wrong. So now you see, it is a good medium for people that make a lot of mistakes. I love that I can fix things, can fix mistakes as easily as I can make them. Okay, there we go. Just wanted to correct that. Okay, let's move on. I'm gonna move to the scrub, uh, the scumbles. Switch my filbert brush out for a flat, and on we go. Certain brushes you kind of sort of fall in love with. So even though you may have dozens that are just alike, you're always looking for your favorite. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to add some clean white because though I still have a lot of white, it is very messed up and I'm afraid I can't make clean colors with dirty white. So got to add more. I accidentally, you can see there, I accidentally scrubbed in a line that doesn't exactly exist. Okay. The thing that keeps popping out at me is this beautiful color that the top of that, the, the apple cut in half is. The character of this color seems really dependent on that greeny yellowy stripe down the middle of it, like where the seeds are and stuff. So I think before I do anything else, I'm gonna try to find that beautiful yellowy, greeny, whitey color there. It is a gorgeous color. And it's slightly darker than the whole rest of that white part of the apple. And I think, let's check, this is well, maybe not quite strong enough. I'm going to make it ever so slightly darker. So when you're um, mixing a color, it's not like you mix the color and there it is. You mix the color and make some dish decisions about how to refine it and keep going till you got it. I think I spend much more time searching for uh, the right color, mixing the right color, than I do actually applying it to the painting. And I don't know if that's characteristic of me or of painters in general. But I think even those that move uh, quicker and with less fault than me, I'm sure they still take the time to make sure 
they got the color, color right. Remember the Impressionists taught us that you don't even need a form. You don't even need outlines. All you need is the correct color and the illusion will be profound. And I think if you, like me, have looked at all those classically Impressionist paintings, oh my God, it's true. They do look like life, even though there's no real discernible shapes. Like the artist Seurat, he used no form at all, just dots. But the colors and the values were so perfect that it depicts a comp complicated daylight scene that's very believable, very convincing. So get the color right, then half the battle, or more than half is won. Okay, I had to go back. Um, well, kind of got off the track. Mixed a color because I was annoyed that I hadn't got the kind of dark accent quite dark enough. Okay. Gonna wait to put the seed in until the rest of the white is there. Look down here, the way the green just slowly melts into the red. That seems really critical to the whole painting. See it right there? I think that's a real important little shape. Okay, now what color is that light value? I believe it's a whitish green. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Maybe a little yellow. Maybe a little green. Do I have it? Oh, I'm in the ballpark. Sometimes I have the right color, just not the right consistency and not the right value. So go back, continue to make improvements. Okay, what do we got now? Eh, that's good. Okay. Oh, if I can just get this interesting half heart shape right, I'll be happy. Okay, I think it's going to be lighter and yellower, right? Lighten it up and yellow it up slightly. Or maybe it's more of a brownie. Okay. Not quite wide enough. It's very close to pure white there at the bottom of the white part of the apple. Okay, here we go. Look, you don't even have to stroke with the brush. You just turn it to make that beautiful curve. You got to get used to how your brush handles so you can make these delightful brush strokes. They're really fun. Okay, can I get that one right? Uh, just turn, just turn, just turn. There we go. Looks like a little bobble there at one point. Uh. Okay. You know, I almost see it going red and pink over there on the other side. So I'm going to hit it with a highlight right now. And since I just happened to see that gorgeous pink in the white, I'm going to stop everything and get it right now. There's something about that part that I just haven't got. Is it this? Is it a pinker color? I think maybe. Yeah, I think maybe that's it, this pinker. You'll always be surprised, you know, it doesn't matter how long you've painted. Always surprised to see what the real color of something is. It's often not what I expected at all. Okay, I'm starting to feel fussy there, so I think the best thing to do is leave it alone a little bit. There's a big block of light color on the left and in that beautiful little triangle between the apples that it's that, that that's the next thing I want to get. Oh, it looks like a blue-gray. 
So manganese blue hue. And I'm going with a little transparent red earth. Let's test it. That was my wild stab. Uh, what is wrong? I think it's a little bluer. That's why it's great to work in community because sometimes these colors are very subtle. And if a color defies you, ask your friend. They may be able to see it more objectively because they haven't been staring at it for the last three hours. Okay, there's that beautiful one there. Let me see if I can get my brush to spread like it into a thin enough ch chisel point to get that. Okay, I think this goes up further. I'll come back in a minute. Okay, now up here. Bam. Bam. And around the curve. I'm going to lighten it up even further and try to come in there and kick it in really a bit stronger and lighter. It's going to do it with straight white. It's going to mix in. There we go. And it just fades away up there. Yeah, you don't have to obsessively fill your entire picture in. Okay. Now I see even higher highlight back in that little triangle between the apples. I want to try to get that right there. Right there. And it's nice and white. Bluish white right there. You want the biggest brush for the job, so switching to one more adequate for what we're doing right now. Okay, looks like a really clean line there. Lighten it up a little bit. There. Comes around like that. And. There. 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 And in there. Okay. Before we go any further, I think it's time to deal with that really bright, bright, bright red part of the apple. I'm going to go back and add a bit of a glaze there. So I'm getting a nice filbert, loading it up with my naturally transparent red earth and maybe a touch of cadmium. Remember, wet into wet, what goes on top has to be thicker than what's underneath or it won't stick. So this particular brush stroke, because it's going over wet glazes, I'm making it as thick a color as I possibly can. So it'll stick. Okay, it goes over like this up here. And then it appears that the color brightens kind of, or it greens out a little bit. 
I'm going to brighten it some with some cadmium red light. And generous amount. Oh, I'm going to try to make this stroke correct. Goes across like that. And it softens as it gets down there. And it looks like there's a real sharp, bright jolt of it. Down here. Okay. It looks like it's sharp there and then softens that edge. And it looks like the shadow in there is darker than I have it. Here's some red. Here's some transparent red earth. I think I should glaze in there a little darker. Right in here. Doesn't it look actually darker? Right up there. Something like that. Okay, I think this has got to be a finger. It's a very soft. There we go.